Our daily life has become increasingly more global as technology has expanded and improved, leading to an ever-escalating need for accurate adaptations of all forms of media, including video games. Translation and localization are two sides of the same coin, but while the former is more focused on the language itself, the latter accounts for cultural nuance as well, and can be just as, if not more important when it comes to making a title feel both authentic and understandable for the broadest possible audience. We've come a long way since the days of iconic lines such as all your base are belong to us, but no matter how good the translation of a title is, some changes will always have to be made. Today, we're highlighting a few instances where the localization process has changed the original content in order to adapt it for a different audience. Some are good, some are a bit strange, but all of them highlight how differently things can be perceived around the world, and how they can sometimes significantly change the tone of a story. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are 10 interesting ways video games have been translated. Number 10. Pac-Man Pac-Man is one of the most iconic video game mascots of all time, thanks to his simple shape and universal appeal. But what if I told you that Pac-Man isn't actually his real name? That is, not his real name in his home country of Japan, at least not originally. Instead, this sentient yellow pizza was first known and marketed as Puckman, a name that's derived from the onomatopoeic phrase meaning to gobble something up, not the fact that he looks a bit like a hockey puck, like some people assume. However, when he was being brought over to other markets, the North American one in particular, his name was changed to Pac-Man in order to discourage people from vandalizing the puck part of the arcade cabinets and turning the word into something slightly more colorful. Throughout Europe, the game was released under both titles, presumably depending on how easy it would be to make questionable alterations in any given language. It may not be the biggest, most earth-shattering translation in the world, but the fact that a game with so little text had to be translated at all is certainly a bit surprising. Number 9. Sonic the Hedgehog when it comes to Sonic and his many adventures, most people are aware of the fact that the most iconic big bad of the game is known as both Dr. Robotnik and Eggman. However, there's an even more interesting translation quirk that's caused chaos in the Blue Blur's world. During an interview, series creator Yuji Naka mentioned one small detail that seemingly changed all of Sonic lore, at least in the West. Somehow, translations of the quote brought up the concept of Mobius, which was assumed to be the planet the game was set on, as opposed to likely being a reference to the twisting levels that look like a Mobius strip. However, starting with Sonic Adventure 2, the planet Sonic was running through at lightning speed was finally called Earth, and it's been that way ever since, causing a fair bit of confusion. There doesn't really seem to be a verified consensus on this issue, with many English-speaking fans believing the two are completely separate planets, while others think that Mobius is a future version of Earth which seems to have been verified by the Sonic comics. However, given that the name Mobius was never used in Japanese media, it's created a strange bit of accepted canon that likely wasn't even there in the first place. Number 8. Judgment The game Judgment is an interesting one, because it's a unique case. There are actually two separate English translations of the title, depending on how players want to experience it. One version sticks close to the Japanese script, for those who want as much accuracy as possible, whilst the other is more loosely translated and sounds a bit more natural at the cost of some authenticity. All of this would be pretty fascinating on its own, but there's one full scene where the localizers went out of their way to make people uncomfortable. At one point in the game, players will be tasked with trying to get their friend Saori into a hostess club in order to procure information, 
And to do this, she has to look the part, which means making sure she appears sexy enough to entertain the male patrons. <laughs> Brilliant. After this has been taken care of, the play switches to a first-person view of Sayori's perspective, forcing the player to experience the sleaziness firsthand. Though it had to be adapted a bit to make it sound uh, better for English audiences, it does a good job of showing that women apparently aren't allowed to walk down the street without people being weird. Hey, here's a thought. Maybe leave strangers alone, yeah? Number 7. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is packed to the brim with fascinating lore, and as such, there were myriad elements that needed to be localized for different audiences. Firstly, all of the names that are used throughout the game, whether characters, places, or monsters, are adapted to make sure they make sense for the intended audience. Not all of these are directly translated, and instead are changed either to something that's meant to feel the same in the target language, or is relatable in the local folklore while remaining accurate to the original Polish as well. On top of that, the characterization and speech patterns of certain characters is altered, and specific regional accents are used that have the same connotations as those in the original. Finally, the game is also translated for different cultural sensibilities, in order to ensure that audiences all over the world can fully appreciate the content. With how big it is and how many languages it got translated into, The Witcher 3 is probably one of the most extreme and impressive examples of interesting localization, and could likely fill a list all on its own. Number 6. The Puyo Puyo Series Especially in the earlier days of video games, plenty of titles got censored as they made their way to the West, thanks to their inclusion of a variety of religious and particularly Christian symbols and themes, with the Puyo Puyo series being just one example from this extensive list. Specifically, the character who was known as Satan in the original Japanese versions of the game is instead known as Dark Prince in Western versions. This started way back at the beginning of the series, with the arcade version of Puyo Puyo changing the name of most of the characters, but also going as far as to remove an entire chunk of conversation with the Dark Prince, as he was now called, that revolved around another character accidentally calling him Santa instead of Satan, something that wouldn't really work with the new name. Despite how many iterations of the game there have been over the years, the moniker of Dark Prince still remains for the character formerly known as Satan. Even though many of the other characters have changed names and nicknames, such as Ryder becoming the more accurately transliterated Liddell, it seems unlikely that this one will be swapped back in the future. Sorry, Satan. Number 5. The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles it took a while for it to get a localization, but The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles has finally made its way to other audiences, albeit with a few significant changes. In the original, the game heavily features Sherlock Holmes, but in order to get away with this in other versions, something had to be done to avoid lawsuits, as there were still a few of Conan Doyle's stories that weren't quite in the public domain in the US, which could have caused massive issues. The solution? Swap the first letters of the two names and create a completely new and original and legally different character named Herlock Sholmes, who is definitely not that famous detective. Stop asking. Holmes himself, sorry, Sholmes himself isn't the only one whose name was changed just to be safe, as his sidekick also went from being Iris Watson to Iris Wilson to dodge any more potential infringements. This isn't where the differences end though, as many of the puzzles in the game, and indeed the whole Ace Attorney series, have had to be adapted for other audiences, thanks to their heavy reliance on wordplay that wouldn't work outside of the original language. It's always a careful balancing act when translating, I mean you don't want to lose the spirit of the original after all, but the fate of this game would likely have been very different if all of this hadn't been handled effectively. Number 4. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door 
There's a whole shopping list of things that were changed when Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door made it out of Japan, such as the removal of wine and blood, or changing Rourke Hawk's name to Hawk Hogan in the Spanish version. Perhaps one of the biggest and most interesting changes, though, has to do with Vivian, and how characters refer to her differently depending on which version of the game is being played. This ghost party member is always referred to as being female in the English and German versions of the game, but in several other iterations, Vivian is often referred to as male in the party description, with Italian being a notable exception to both of these, mentioning that she used to be male but is now female and proud of it. As such, Vivian's story arc, and to some extent the story arc of those around her, varies quite drastically depending on which version of the game that's being played, with only the Italian version being open about the fact that she's trans. While a a lot of these localizations are problematic, and the exact nuances of how Vivian was portrayed in the original Japanese are too much to get into here, it's still fascinating to look back and see how different localization teams interpreted her journey. Number 3. Final Fantasy VIII Squall, the protagonist of Final Fantasy VIII, is known for being a bit aloof, especially thanks to his liberal use of the word whatever. This wasn't necessarily the intention, however, as each of these dismissive remarks is actually subtly different in the original, often in ways that actually add a bit more character to him or fit the situation just that little bit better. To start with, the phrase he's known for in Japanese as much as he's known for whatever in English would translate more accurately to an informal sort of excuse me something along the lines of my bad. That's just the tip of the iceberg, though, as some of the other lines that have been given the dismissal treatment range from the relatively similar I don't care to the quite different how annoying and leave me alone, and in one case, I can't believe this teacher. With how different all of these lines are in actuality, it's a bit of a baffling choice that they were all deemed to basically mean the same thing in translation, especially with the deeper characterization they inherently provide, but it does reflect how new the localization process was at the time. Number 2. Banjo-Kazooie all of the games we've looked at so far have come from non-English speaking countries, and we've been primarily looking at how they've been adapted into English, but this time we're going the other direction with Banjo-Kazooie. One of the most iconic features of this game is the rhyming dialogue, but this caused a significant hurdle for the team who are trying to adapt the game for a Japanese audience. Due to the nature of the language and its syllabary, rhyming is not really a thing in Japanese which is why haiku and other Japanese poetry rely on syllables specifically. In order to convey this in the game, other tactics had to be used to give the dialogue a similar feel, and this was especially notable with Gruntilda. To make a different speech pattern that would be unique to her, she was given one that sounds very much like the language an old lady would use, but it didn't quite end there. To set her speech even further apart from the others, they used a unique spelling of some of the affectations, and made it so that she holds her vowels for an especially long time. This gives Grunty quite a different feel, but it was the best way to distinguish her and ensure that she'd be just as memorable as her English rhyming counterpart. And number 1. The Legend of Zelda – A Link Between Worlds in The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds, players will eventually stumble upon Zora's Domain, an iconic area found in several games in the series. However, after they've encountered a shady thief and stumbled across the Zora Queen behind the waterfall, they will have a vastly different experience depending on what version of the game they're playing. In the original, and indeed many of the other translations, much of the dialogue makes reference to the stone being the source of the Queen's beauty, not so subtly shaming the Queen for her current size and suggesting she is no longer attractive. However, when adapting the game for the English-speaking market, these references were changed to make them less problematic. Here, the localization team decided to make it so that the stone was instead a source of the Queen's power, taking away all of the references to her beauty. 
There was, admittedly, only so much that could be done about the animations, that is to say, nothing could be done about the animations, but changing the approach to this scene ensured that the audience of the game wasn't exposed to anything that could be deemed as body shaming. 